Hi, it's Simon Stockhausen here from Patchpool. This is a first um, basic tutorial on arcs and by SPC, um, a synth which has recently popped up and is quite unique and unorthodox, as the developer says, and I can confirm. So here is a patch I just dialed in and um, called Angry Wasp, so you probably know what to expect. Let's uh, sort of analyze a few functions um, with this patch. So let's first listen to oscillator 1, which is here. We're having a sync saw modulated by envelope 2 up here in the matrix. The shape of this. So let's first mute this or remove it. And just listen to the waveforms in the oscillator. <laughs> this is already um, rooted to filter one and two here with this slider. You can set the balance. So if I move it all the way up, it's only going through the scramble filter. bypass or the filter now and just listen to the waveform as it is. Now bring back in the filter, scramble and put envelope 2 assigned to oscillator 1 shape back in. It's down here. Here you see the curve. It's velocity sensitive. So if I press play softly the amplitude gets just higher. If I route this to filter 2, down here it's a 4-pole low pass modulated, already the um, frequency is modulated by two LFOs, LFO 3 and 4 combined. Here's a chain, it's both tempo synced, and they are combined using a modifier. Here you have a list of very useful modifiers. All of these functions are described on the web SPC website. The bit random stuff that gets pretty crazy. And down here you have things for making uh, tonal textures, but we'll have a look at that later. So, now we have oscillator 1 routed to filter 2 with this slider. So here's the chain, you see it moving through the back and forth. Now let's bring in oscillator 2. Let's cut this for now. <coughs> oscillator 2 is rooted to filter 2. Let's bypass this filter for a moment. Panning is also generated by LFOs. You see here, filter 2 has a dedicated pan, and one two, uh, w also 1 has this. As all oscillators create only monophonic signals, in order to create um, stereo sounds, there are numerous possibilities, rather than all only using uh, stereo effects, which is always an option. Um, to get some animation in the stereo field there. This is one method, just um, modulating the filter pan. And you also hear the, um, the shape 
is modulated, oscillated to shape is modulated by this chain here. If I exchange the waveform or here, the shape modulation just persists in any waveform you select once you've dialed it in here. So back to, where was it? Hmm. Let's go back to the initial patch. Whoops. Oh, we've just come encountered. Uh, I thought the bug came back because in logic, which is what I'm using here, Sometimes presets don't recall correctly and other issues occur. But until now, knock on wood, wait, knock, it's happening. <laughs> so um, in the second row of the mod matrix, in the sec second eight slots, I've also assigned the modulation wheel and pressure to some things. The modulation wheel in this case increases the resonance of filter 2 and pressure increases the overall filter frequency because you can either assign it to one of the filters or both filters or invert it. So let's just dial in the mod wheel now. And pressure, meaning aftertouch. <laughs> Increases, um, as I said, filter frequency. Um, the filter 2 drive is also modulated by a combination of LFO3 and 4. The same chain is used, uh, the same combo is used using either multiply or curve for the frequency. Now, if we wanted to add for a simple, let's do a simple pitch sequence using maybe octaves and fifths. So I could um, select the pulse waveform. Let's make it a something quick and easy. And you have two values here. You have the wave level. In 127 like steps, we you know that from the MIDI domain, but you can also use these as um, sort of scale to 24 steps. You, if you you can use that for semitones, two octave range pitch sequences. So let's do that. Zero, twelve, twenty-four. 12, can't get easier than that, set it to 4 steps, sync it, this is now Quavis, let's, yeah, the 16th notes, make it reset, meaning a re-triggering polyphonic LFO, you can also do a monophonic LFO, but we want Retriggering pitch sequence per <coughs> sorry per pl uh, key played. So now we have we have to assign this to LFO five and use oscillator frequency. Let's apply it to both oscillators. So we're choosing the overall oscillator frequency. Now dial in a level. So now we have this 
going in, in a two octave range. <laughs> Set it to different pitches, so fifth octave and a fourth. Double the speed. Now we can add an another LFO, let's use number six. Dial in something crazy here. Let's use uh, also tempo synced and let's maybe use a fractal shape. So LFO, LFO6, now combine them with something weird. Like I said, all those functions here can be studied on the website there's a dedicated page also link linked in the manual where you can learn more about these yeah bring it on <laughs> Now what's also possible, let's remove this target again. We now have this set up, LFO, LFOs 5 and 6 combined uh, using the modifier bit shift. This is mod row or column 11. Now we can use this mod 11, this combination in other for other things. Um, and we don't even have to assign it here, so let's reset that. Now here we have mod 11, and we can also assign it to frequency. And now we use the modulation wheel as source B, and combine these using multiply. So modulation wheel will introduce this combination with this as a target. So let's hear that. <laughs> Dialing in the wheel introduces this combination applied to frequency and now I could use um, um, modulation 13 which is already this setup for something else so that makes it easier to assign complex uh, modulation combinations to things. <laughs> Okay, for first tutorial, this should be enough. More to come. Bye.